This video is a 2019 level three waves exam question one. Right, um, Sarah builds a simple guitar using a hollow wooden box as a resonator, three strings on a wooden fretboard. She fixes the strings between two bridges that are separated by um, 0.736, we'll call that L because it's a length, length L. Um, in the space below, sketch the fourth harmonic brackets third overtone that is formed when a string is plucked. So each end is fixed, so we're going to have a node at this end, I'll just have N for node, we're going to have a node for th at this end, um, another node. Fourth harmonic um, is four times the fundamental frequency, or one fourth, or quarter, the wavelength of the fundamental frequency. Um, so for like a fixed fixed, um, with a node at each end, you can fit half a wave. So you could fit half a wave. Um, so this would be the fundamental frequency or the first harmonic, which is just the like the like is it the minimum you could fit? Yeah, the minimum amount of waves you could fit. Um, you can't have an anti-node or like the the string moving at the ends because it says it's fixed. So four of them it means I need to have four of these, so four of these like wave units. So I'm going to split this. I should have a rule of it, and have one on me. Um, so I'll just sort of freestyle it. So there would be halfway roughly. There would be a quarter, and there would be the other quarter. So I'm going to have four half waves. So uh, how am I going to do that? I'm going to do it. Spin the page around this because I'm not very good at art. And if I go up like that, and like that, and if I go up like that there, um, and I'll try and go to there, no, it's not too messy, so that's my wave, and then I'll do the other side, and I'll do it dotted, just to represent that it is the string oscillating, and not that there's actually two strings. Um, so here is my fourth harmonic, and I'll just label it, that's an anti-node, that's a node, that's an anti-node, that's a node, that's an antinode, node, antinode. Um, and I'll chuck in here A equals antinode, which is a point of maximum displacement, and N is node. Um, not that I have to, but I chucked it in anyway. All right, calculate, calculate the speed of the wave through this. Uh, through the string, no, the speed of the wave <laughs> through the string is 289 meters per second. Calculate the wavelength and frequency of this harmonic. So in your formula sheet, there'll be the wave equation, which is V equals uh, F lambda. Um, we need to first find the wavelength um, to find the frequency. And to find the wavelength, what we're going to do is we're going to, we know the length of like the actual instrument, um, we're going to write a relationship that links the length of the instrument to how many waves are in it. So we can say the length of the instrument is equal to, uh, and this is for the, we'll do the fourth harmonic because whatever, um, of this harmonic, yeah, so we need to do the, the wavelength of the fourth harmonic and the frequency of the fourth harmonic. So we can see there's half a wave, whole wave, one and a half, two waves. So we say the length is equal to two waves, or two times a wavelength. Um, that's a way to think about it you know, visually or verbally or whatever. In other words, lambda is equal to half uh, L, because it's times uh, both sides by a half. Um, and then that equals, I'll just get my calculator. So I get 0.368, so I'll just chuck the working in there, um, 0 0.736 over 2 equals 0 0.368 meters. Um, and then frequency, so this is the wavelength, um, frequency equals velocity over wavelength, um, which is 289 um, divided by, what have we got, 0. 368, and then if we go 289, shift answer, I've just stored the answer as that, which is 785.326, whatever hertz. And then we'll chuck down here, lambda is equal to 0 0.368 
meters and then we've got frequency is equal to uh, 785 hertz because we round it to 3 SF. Um, I don't know why I chuck a dash from for the Z, it's just habit. Um, there we go, so this is for your markers, so you can see it's easy, like easily in there, check your working, and make sure you've got your formula, your numbers in, bada bang, bada bang. Um, what is it? Uh, right, the three strings of the box guitar produce different fundamental frequencies when played. Even though the strings are the same length, they're made of the same, animated the same material, use this equation below um, to explain how this is possible. Um, so we've got, what are they? Same length, same material. Right, use, okay, right. So velocity is equal to tension divided by mass per unit length. Um, tension is just like force. Um, and mass per unit length is kgs per meter. Um, it's not really density per se. Um, density is mass. Okay, it is kind of. It's kind of. It is sort of density in a two. It's like a density in a two D slice. But anyway, it's completely irregardless. Um, all we need to do is show that the two things that change the frequency are the tension and mass per unit length. So what we'll do is, oh. I'll explain how it works. So what I'll do is I'll just velocity squared. Uh, oops, I'll just velocity squared, if we can see that, um, is equal to uh, tension, capital T, over, now the the symbol for mass per unit length is actually mu. Um, it's this funny symbol here. But you don't need to remember that. You could call, you could have any letter, letter you want. You could have, I don't know, you could write the whole word if you wanted to, as, as, if you want. Or you could have K and you just let, you know, you could say, I don't know, not it's K, what's a different? Uh, Christmas tree. Christmas tree is probably the best way to do it. You could do that, mass per unit length. And as long as that symbol, um, unit length, you could use this as your symbol. Or as, long, as long as you define it, it doesn't really matter. But I'm just going to use mu because that's what it actually is. Um, so we can say, if we increase the tension, that'll increase the velocity. Um, given that the wavelength is fixed, because it's a fixed size instrument, um, that'll increase the frequency. Or what we could do is we could decrease the mass per unit length. I'm not going to go into too much detail how you do that. You just normally these strings, you'd actually increase the radius. That's how you change it. But you could either decrease the mass per mass per unit length to increase the frequency or you can increase the tension to increase the frequency or vice versa. So I'll just pause, write it up sort of neatly and then um, explain what I've done. Right, so I said if we increase the tension, this increases the wave velocity as the wavelength is fixed from V uh, and then I'm fixed. Probably full stop there. Um, capital F from V equals F lambda, so the wave equation frequency will increase because um, wavelength is fixed. If we decrease, uh, I've just put mu, so the mass per unit length, wave velocity will increase and frequency. So if you decrease this, wave velocity will increase. Um, so by having, uh, and frequency will also increase, because I've kind of already stated that the fact that wave length is constant. Um, so by having different tensions in the string or by string or string size, um, let me comma, different frequencies can be made. I'm kind of rushing this one because I want to, dwell on it for too long. Um, the key concepts are the fact that the wavelength is fixed um, and the fact that you can manipulate this formula. I'm kind of a bit iffy about this one here. Uh, I'm not sure whether this concept is in that many of the textbooks. I know it is in the Boersman textbook. Um, I know it's definitely part of the scholarship sort of syllabus. Um, there are definitely questions on this concept. Um, bit iffy about it actually being in level three, but whatever. I know it's in the Boersman textbook, and that's my students. That's the one my students have, so I'm kind of fine with that. Um, right, we've got next. Sarah wants to tune the D string to a frequency 140 hertz, seven hertz. She plays 147 hertz tuning forks. Um, when she plucks a D string on the guitar, she notices pulsating loudness twice every second. So cycles per second. This means the that is a beat frequency and it's a beat frequency of two hertz when she gradually increases the tension which we've just figured out that that'll increase the frequency the pulsating loudness becomes less and less frequent then disappears explain this phenomenon that causes pulsating loudness and why increasing the tension makes the um, string disappear so 
um, do this one first. Uh, it's called, so I'll, I'll maybe I'll just pause it, write a bit of the explanation, and then I'll calculate that out. Right, so I've said it is called beats when two waves of similar frequency go in and out of phase, constructively and destructively interfering. Um, the, frequent, the beat frequency is just equal to F1 minus F2, and it's the magnitude, so it's the absolute value. In other words, it's literally just the difference between the two, two uh, frequencies. Um, we know that, um, we'll go F beat minus, I don't know, F1 is equal to F2. Um, and we know that this has to be less than 147 because she went up from it. Um, so what we can say, we'll say, is it the D string? Yeah, D string, string is lower than, uh, what is it, 147, as velocity is proportional-ish to frequency and V is increasing. Increasing. So, um, technically, what do we got? If B, uh, no, hold on, this doesn't make any sense. Uh, one minus the other. Um, should be, that is not rearranged correctly whatsoever. That should be if. Ooh, what do I do? Do I rearrange it? No, I just know that it's 145. So, uh, if 1 is equal to 147, thus, if 2 is equal to 145. Um, just a bit of a mind blank how to rearrange it. I just know that, that if that's 147, that must be 145 because it comes down from that. Um, because if 1 is definitely 147, if 2 is 145, Oh, I can totally see. It's actually uh, F1 minus FB is equal to F2. There we go. Right, and is that anything else we need to do? Um, so, D string, string is... 145 hertz. I think that's about it. Right.